Hi, this is Joseph Phillips. In this presentation, we're going to look at planning project quality. Planning project quality is something that every project manager has to do with the project stakeholders. But you have to define what does quality mean in your project in order to achieve quality in your project. One of the first conversations you'll have is what is the difference between quality and grade? Now, quality is about fulfilling requirements. It's actually a conformance to requirements and a fitness for use. So quality is about satisfying the project scope, the product scope. It's also satisfying the implied needs. The implied needs are those, those non-quantifiable elements that the stakeholder expects and they're implied with the deliverable. Um, so they expect it to be functional and they expect it to be safe and scalable. Um, so some of those, you know, good and happy that you can't really quantify it, but it's implied. Now grade is really about a category or a ranking. So like you have a class of services, first class versus coach, or gold, silver, and bronze customer service. Grade is also applied to types of materials, like you can have oak, and you can have plywood, or you could have, you know, maple wood. So there's all different types of grades with services and with materials. A great example to keep in mind with quality and grade is that low quality is always a problem. Low grade may not be. If you aren't conforming to requirements, then you have low quality. The project may call for a low grade material because that is acceptable. It, it's possible, and in fact, it's, it's almost mandatory, that you could have low grade and still satisfy quality if the project requirements call for low grade. A great example of that is, is uh, shipping, that the project calls for shipping to go three-day ground, so the least expensive type of shipping. So that may be a low grade service but it still satisfies the quality if the materials that you're shipping arrive on time and they aren't damaged and everyone receives the materials on the destination. So you could have quality with low grade. Standards and regulations are two other things you have to plan for. Standards are optional. So for example, the size of a CD is a standard. But there's lots of CDs out there that come in all sorts of weird different sizes. No one's going to jail because they create a new type of CD. Regulations, however, are requirements. Regulations are never optional. So if you think about in healthcare or in construction, there are some definite regulations that we have to follow for safety. A term you'll need to know deals with the cost of conformance to requirements. The cost of conformance to requirements means that you pay the money to ascertain the expected level of quality in your project. So you think about safety measures, team development and training, using the right types of materials and processes. Those are all examples of the cost of conformance to requirements, sometimes called the cost of quality. Now, if we don't pay those monies to achieve quality, we'll have the cost of non-conformance to requirements. And this could mean that you have liability. Someone gets hurt on your job or in your project. Um, you might have rework and waste. You could also have your customer leave so you have lost business and lost opportunities. And sometimes that's called the cost of poor quality. Some quality planning tools you'll need to be familiar with for your PMP exam First off, just brainstorming. You generate ideas on how do you ascertain the expected level of quality. An affinity diagram is like brainstorming, but you group the ideas based on similarities and so that we can have um, brainstorming and lateral thinking just on certain portions of the project so it's not all over the place. A force field analysis means that it's an examination of the forces that are for and against your project and what type of impact and influence and interest do they have on your project. The nominal group technique is very similar to brainstorming but instead of just ranking or instead of just throwing the ideas out there they are ranked and then they're reviewed by a larger group 
based on how a smaller group has ranked those ideas. So that's the nominal group technique. Now the quality management plan is the outcome of quality planning. You define quality assurance, which means how will we do the project work right the first time. We do quality control. How do we prevent mistakes from getting to the customer? We look for opportunities for continuous process improvement. And we also define the operational definitions. So the terminology or any metrics that we're using, any special um, terms that we need to define in our project so everyone understands the terminology and you know, how we're going to operate. Are we using uh, the metric system or are we using the English system? So what is our uh, lexicon and our glossary?